gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you gave us. We thank you for the opportunity to live in a country where we can express our opinions by going to the polls and voting. And so we thank you, God, for that opportunity today. I pray that you'll bless our meeting tonight. May your presence be here. Give us your wisdom and your guidance. We pray. Amen. 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 Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the fact that you have the minutes from the October 16th meeting, motion to approve. Motion. Second. Second. Questions or objections? Uh, <coughs> Chamber staff recently completed the application to continue being recognized as the designated marketing organization for Dunklin County through the Promote Missouri Fund. We have to have that designation just to be approved for any future grants, so we went ahead and filled that out and submitted it before November 2nd. We will find out if we will maintain that status the first week of December, so we'll report back and let you know then. Right now, the tourism account has two pending reimbursements. And the first, CAFTA sent in the, they had already, we've already reimbursed them for half of their expenses. Now they've sent in their second half, so I'll go through those and get those to Ms. Brenda this week. And then also, we have previously allocated for center stage productions. They had that this past week and I'm waiting on them to turn in their receipt request. Um, and then, uh, this may be my, potentially be my last report for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I just want to let you know, the chamber office will still be staffed. We'll bring in a part-time temporary um, to help with tourism and welcome center duties. And our office will provide our tourism report each month to you by uh, mail or email, if that's okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Others? Don't have anything at this time. Well, we need to talk about some animal ordinances. We've had uh, a couple of incidents. Uh, one out on uh, Independence Avenue where a three dog pulled a guy off of a bicycle. And we've got another dog out in the Westgate edition that is uh, giving people problems. So, Mr. Terry, <coughs> what is the form of action we need to take? The problem is, we're, I don't know, I mean, well, the problem is the, the stray dogs are being fed by a certain group of people on a regular basis, and this prohibits. The, well, it doesn't prohibit, but the dog's already fed, so when you set That's the more. trap with with meat or a bait, they aren't taken to it. So, you know, you, and you're not going to be able to approach a stray because it's either going to run off, unless it's aggressive and comes toward you. And apparently that's what both these cases are. Case in the morning, the... One that the dog is out there now, it's been going on for 10 days now. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, I, Randy was, were any of the street employees, were, were they involved in any of that with the dog? I don't think so. We have, we have any trouble with dogs? Well, I, not that particular dog. There was an incident today with a dog. Today, okay. We're on the one Harrison, today. the corner of Harrison and Jackson. The guy came out, let the dog out, and it ran over like it was going to bite us. I had to take a rake and kind of hit it and push it away and he come and hollered at it and it went on up in the yard. Well, this thing's been going on out there for, I know, 10 days. And uh, like I said it's, it, it, it scared people and it attacked one of the dogs out there. And uh, um, with the person walking it, she's lucky she wasn't bit. And uh, you're gonna have to figure out something to do with it because the animal control people are trying to get yeah, this under control, but they're short, yeah. kind of uh, short of ammo right now with it. Well, I got a call from uh, Councilman Wayne it went out there immediately yesterday, as I did again Friday when Councilman Weatherwax talked to me. I didn't see the dog yesterday, but Friday it was there, and then we got this other call on Independence, and it was sitting wide open in person's front yard. But 
I met Kayla and she was coming in with the van and she told me that one of the neighbors told her face to face he, he's been feeding the dogs on a regular basis and that she's been baiting it. In fact, she went to Kentucky Fried Chicken and got some fresh bait to put in. What tools do you need to handle this situation? Well, you got to have something that restricts people. You know, how, how deworded whatever, build a and just openly and, feeding. And They've actually got feeding stations established in several areas of the city. We talked about, about getting a tranquilizer gun. gun. Yeah, the tranquilizer gun. <coughs> um, they're not good in all cases. In this case, when I pulled up Friday, the dog was sitting there, and you could have easily, from the street without exiting a vehicle, probably tranquilize. So that's another tool you could put in the bag to get yes. this situation under control. Definitely. Well, there might not be good in all cases. No, but it wouldn't have worked on the other incident. put the dog through the rescue yeah. system again. And yeah. It wouldn't have worked on the it. other incident on Independence because of where those dogs you got into and, and they're, they're a little bit more aggressive and all that. But we need a long-term solution with it, too. And yeah, uh, and, and you got to... And we would have to be, do something that's crafted that won't be uh, interpreted as saying it's illegal to feed starving animals. Or to feed your own dog. Yeah. We, don't yeah. want to we, we really that. don't want to be, be, be put in that situation. Yeah. Yes. No. You just want something to control the situation right. and have no more. I'll, I'll, say what I, I'll look to see what I'm saying. I mean, my plea to the public is, yeah. if we can capture a lot of these dogs that are strays, they go, basically they're a 99.9% .9 non-kill, dog pound. Only if the vet in the area determines the dog is so emaciated it won't recover. So they get it into a rescue system and someone's going to turn the dog into a pet and it's going to get the proper vaccinations, proper feeding, proper worming. The way they are now, they're, they're really that, yeah, If we can't catch them because uh, they, are, when they are taken to our humane department, uh, they have such a great network of <laughs> rescue agencies that they can just, it goes on Facebook and where certain people are sharing it, all these rescues that recognize Kennett Humane Department start saying, we'll take them, we'll ta tag them for rescue. It, it's that, it's like that. Um, and so emaciated dogs, uh, dogs with injuries can be, um, they're gone. We don't have to get them back to health we can find a rescue that will do that and then socialize them. But yeah, we've got to be able to catch them. Exactly. Yeah, we've got to be able to catch them. But there's, got to, I mean, there's going to be more than one way to do it. And the, the way we're going right now with the number that we have, we're probably looking at a staffing issue again, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I could be. Um, we, they picked up like 25 strays after one weekend. I know mm -hmm. in talking to Tina, Kayla, there tends to be I guess a trend of dumping animals in Kennett. Right. Uh, just recently, a whole uh, litter of dogs left at Super 8 parking lot. Somebody found them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just one incident. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because we're an organized city that has an animal control department and there's not really in the right immediate area to us or what. I don't How know can what we means. enforce spay and litter? I know cities do it. I just don't know how. We, we need to have that somehow where your dog has to be, and cat, have, have to be neutered. Probably they have the other, uh, a lot of the cities have license requirements, which we don't. Well, then we need to. Because this, this is not going to get better. We, when we did, we used to. We had licenses, but we had to get a dog license or a cat license. But I think we were selling maybe 10 a year or something like that. Yeah, I, I, that, that's what it I wasn't mean. being enforced. We need to enforce this. Uh, there are some people that absolutely won't get their dog neutered. Even if you offer to take it, pay for it, and bring it back to them. They won't do it. And we, we, we have a, an issue. A serious one. Well, if it's just a license thing, it's encouraged and, and 
followed, then that would also be a way to help provide some revenue to assist in hiring more personnel. But yeah. Like I said, it's and not going to work if only it 10 has people to be do enforced. It. Yeah, so, but it would be a way for personnel to bring be brought on. Mr. Westerfield, that incident you were talking about a while ago was that an intentional? I just apparently he just let the dog out to use the bathroom and it heard us over there and ran over there. That's the first time we've had any issues there. But I mean, it's really the first time we've had much of an issue with dogs. Usually they're inside a fence or something and they kind of go wild, but this one was just let well, out. It's in the yard, that's one thing. But, but well, they ran out of the yard. Well, he ran out in the street. Yard, that's one thing, but if this wasn't. But that's the only time we've had issues there at that place. this incident on independence <clears throat> you know kenny and i and, and the officers involved uh, worked together I mean, we had a number of witnesses and a fire truck and ambulance coming back from the call witnessed it straight forward and got out and took some actions and you know it you had to make quick decisions fast dogs had no collars on them uh, there, I, you can look at the pictures of individual had been bitten at least twice, broke skin. You don't know if you got three dogs that have rabies or you don't know what it is. And we had to be able to try and recover it. And we was able to on two of them. Got them off to the vet. Hopefully we get the reports back. But And I think an owner has come forward since on one dog and has been summoned. But, you know. This, this wasn't a child, this was a, a grown adult riding a bicycle and three dogs pulled him down right in the middle of Independence Avenue in broad daylight. And we need enforcement. Should we look at the licensing again and use the red and it actually enforce it? I mean, and also would the police department be able to help with that? I mean. <laughs> How would you enforce something like that? I mean, I know. It, that, that's the and thing. Getting everybody to report their dogs and license that dog. I mean, how are you going to enforce that law? We, we have a lot of animal lovers in this town, and we know that from things that we've been through with, you know, past police chiefs doing things. And, and uh, you know, perhaps if just we did, what we do is try to encourage all the animal, animal lovers to take care of the dogs, license them, encourage their neighbors, their friends to do it too and provide a system of revenue for us to provide better care for the dogs. It's just that, I mean, it may be something that goes There's over. certain people that will do that and you won't have an issue with it. But those and, and animal some, lovers are the ones that love their animals and take care of them. Right. Uh, that's, there's a big difference. The individual it takes a big log chain around a dog's neck, yeah. try to change it to a tree and it knocks its water over and never checked on it, he's not going to do nothing. You right. wonder why they have a dog. Except when we go out to check on it, then if they don't have their license, then we could enforce it that yeah. way. Yeah. What did the license do before? What, what was the criteria for that? You said pay five or ten dollars a year to get their dog license. Get approved vaccination. Yeah. That's it. Uh, I said, we probably quit doing it. 20 years ago, uh, because it was the solution. 10 or 20 years ago. And those really aren't the dogs that are the problem, really. Are they? So, I mean, no, I'm, I'm going to research this because, like I said, starting it would be, it seems impossible because how do you go knock on doors and go, do you have an animal? Is it the, uh, so it would have to start from this, that day that we started it forward, or if there is a way to incorporate them the next year? So well, I mean, that's how you're going to, if, if you're going to be able to enforce it. It's almost yeah. like we have to have a census. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's the responsible dog owners, not the ones you're going to have yeah. trouble no. with. They're the ones that are going to report it. That's the one that's not going to report it. That's the one that's going to be hard to Well, if we don't do something, we're going to have to add those staff. So. Yeah. Going back to the very beginning about 
to hunt down some of these stray dogs. And I know we discussed this dark gun. Would that be a tool that you could use in certain instances to help? In certain incidents, yes, but like there again, uh, yes. it's in the wooded area. Yes, yes. yes. it or whatever. Work. But yes, sometimes it will. I mean, okay. it's just like a law enforcement officer using maze Can or a taser. It don't phase everybody out there. Can we look into getting that, or you get some numbers together, and the issues and the insurance, et cetera, et cetera? Do we have them? We, the one we have is out of service. Okay. It's, it's not preparable. So we've had one before, it's not an issue to have one. They're about $800. For, we can go ahead and get another one. Yeah. 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 I'll make a motion. One or two. I'll make a motion. Yeah. Well, I'll, 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 I'll make a motion. I second. How long would it take to train everybody on it? We just have to. They're, they're, real, they're relatively easy because they're either air powered or it's like a 22 blank powered. It's a, it's a cartridge. What I had in there was to buy a training dart. You set a target up, load it up, and shoot it at a target. And, and what I proposed was, and, and I'll talk to Chief Wilson a little bit about this, is get several officers that get some experience with it. As a supervisor, I don't mind getting you the training with it. And, you know, we can have the two animal control officers. It's not that hard. Yeah. All right, well, we made a motion and a second. Motion and a second on the fourth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I say, I say two one for animal control, one for, one for police. There's a motion for one or two? Two. Motion's for two. Two, two. okay. There you go. Any further discussion? No. What? Why do we want to go to? Animal control, police officers. Animal control is not there all the time. Every year. You can get the night officers and yep. the officers on weekends. Yeah. There's not an animal control officer around. At least an officer has the option. You're good on that. Help, and that would be good. All right. You're good on that. That's good. <coughs> okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Just one uh, side issue about those three animals that we just had in trouble with. <coughs> I know Kayla and Tina have been chasing those same dogs for about three years. And they go, have gone all over this town and the street smart. They do not respond to traps. <coughs> so not be bad. At least those three are out of the picture now. But, uh, we, we still got a lot of them. I don't know if this number is totally verifiable, but I was told that we've already handled over 1,000 dogs this year. 1,092 was the last I heard. Yeah. And that's up from about 800 and something last year. So it's pretty obvious that our so surrounding area is dumping animals into the city. Mm -hmm. yeah. While you're on that subject, what I've thought here, uh, I know they deal with a lot of animals that uh, have collars and uh, they pick them up and hold them, and the owners come out and retrieve them. Uh, no charge to the owner. Uh, one thing you might consider is if they get picked up, Definitely. go retrieve the animal, uh, you've got to pay a fee to get the dog back. Because uh, in some cases, we'll go on vacation, we'll still pick up the dog, and we'll pick the dog up mm -hmm. when we get back from vacation. So we can put a free boarding house. And also it could be if it's not neutered, you gotta pay the fee and you gotta bring us a receipt that says I have a vet that will do this. Well, if the dog is picked up and impounded by parking a bag for culture, it's required before that dog can be released, it has to be neutered or spayed. Unless the owner can attest that they're going to use and it's a full bred dog or whatever, they're going to use it for sporting or whatever. Other than that, that's a requirement by the Department of Agriculture. I don't, I don't like that. Because everyone will say that. Well, I'm just... I know, but that's, we've got to get away around We that. can make the rules stricter, we just right. can't make them less. <clears throat> What is on practice now? How many? How many are saying that these? these are We've only had one or two. No, really, have had. No, they're, most they're of those picked day. up going to a rescue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After five days. Probably. 
89%. Generally, if a household pet that someone takes care of gets out of the fenced in area or runs out the doors or going out, they're looking for it, they're calling. Kenny, do you recall dispatch? They usually will get a call sometime, their dog's loose and out looking or whatever. They're not out there just letting it all. Fido won't come home. They're out there looking for it. Well, on the same pet lovers that you referred to, those of us that are on Facebook, it becomes a way to say, they'll take a picture of it. Is this your dog? Or I have this dog in my backyard. I found it. Yeah. Who's your? And it, it's amazing how far it goes. And we have returned lots of dogs. Yes. That the Humane Department didn't have to have. The important thing is, is to have some type of collar and identification tag. Mm -hmm. Anything else on the animals tonight? Dave, you have anything else to fight for? Nothing. No, I think that's plenty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the resources out here tonight. Uh, this be everything we have not had a meeting. Yeah, but that would be more clear. Street? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a couple of issues. Uh, <clears throat> We've got the, well, we have the biggest issue we have right now is the gravel roads surrounding Kennett and the outskirts of Kennett. And uh, we have a lot of washout, a lot of issues there. Uh, it's going to be probably our main topic at the street committee meeting when we have that. Um, there are really no good solutions. Uh, some of the people that I've talked to, I've asked them to contact the township to see what they can do about it as well. It's a financial burden to us, and I've had some discussions with the township on it, and we it's one of the reasons we're trying to pave those roads. But we agreed with our plan initially, we'd start at the center and work our way out. Well, the township, uh, I'm you know, going to talk with them a little bit about helping us with that and maybe start from the outside and work their way in. We have some situations that the only way we can get it solved is have the township's cooperation on it. Uh, example, South Jackson. Uh, so we'll be discussing that in great detail. Uh, I've asked the people that I've talked to to uh, bear, you know, give us a chance here to get this <coughs> resolved. And uh, I don't know if we need to do anything, a temporary measure right now. Anything we do is going to be costly and timely. And we have a lot of issues still at hand. So I'd just like to bring it to the committee next time we meet and go from there. Um, when will that be? Uh, let's see, what uh, what do we have, Randy? Well, the stormwater needs to meet before the next council meeting. Mm -hmm. We're hoping we'll have beds coming in for 3rd Street on the 15th, and we need to have a stormwater meeting either Monday night or before we, well, Monday night would probably be preferred before the next council meeting, so we've got several things to discuss so there. Monday or Tuesday before the council, but if we do it Monday, we don't have restrictions of time if we do it before the council <coughs> meeting. We're going to have to be restricted, so my suggestion would be to do it Monday. Monday. Okay, yeah, so. That, that, I'm talking about storm on there. Yeah, that's stormwater, but while we're at stormwater, we can also have a discussion on, on the. Uh, so you just want to have a joint meeting, street yes. and storm? Yes. Fair enough. That way there's more, more discussion. Um, let's see. And at that meeting, will we be able to come up with a solution to these outside? The plan. Gravel roads, because mm -hmm. I'm even getting called, but it's not even my work. I mean, that's fine, but I'm just saying, yeah. I mean, it's bad. Yeah, we're going to have to come up with something. I had a man call me today and told me that they're driving into his lot to watch to avoid the bumps and the holes and all that stuff. And it's not the first time. Uh, I have several phone calls on it. And uh, so we'll, we'll have to deal with it, but it may give me the opportunity to talk to the township as well before that. Um, Randy covered, we've got bid openings coming up. Um, construction's been late this year and the end of the year. Um, it's been uh, kind of a busy year, a long construction season this year. Um, that's, that's all I've got right now. Over on the streets, uh, in your packets, you have a letter, a copy of a letter from uh, former councilman Mark Ellis. Uh, since being on October 30th, and uh, it's always great to get a positive uh, response from, from the citizens of uh, 
we were leading to the improvements from the street department in the streets, so uh, you can read that at your convenience. Sometimes you see a storm water at the same time. Okay, department of energy, Todd? Uh, yes, I want to don't steal Kenny Wilson Sunder either, but want to say thanks to Abundant Life and the Common Ground Church for your appreciation. The best they had last like Saturday for the police and the fire and the EMS and the community, so we appreciate it. And they gave each uh, one of the attendees a uh, appropriate Bible for their, their job profession. It was uh, really nice and they had a Inner forest, and uh, it, it means a lot to the uh, uh, public safety community when they're recognized for the efforts that they uh, put forth to the citizens out there. So I want to say I appreciate them and their thoughtfulness, and uh, uh, it was enjoyable. The other thing uh, I want to mention is you may have heard it in the news. Uh, back in 2012, Jack, uh, Governor Nixon appointed me to the Missouri Sap Seismic Safety Commission. Uh, I think it was 2012. So I was on there and kind of term expired and been on there still. So recently was submitted by the uh, uh, State Emergency Management to Governor Parsons. And once again, he has appointed me to uh, serve in the capacity of fire position as a fire rep on there on the Missouri Seismic Safety Commission. What the commission does, we look at different things throughout the state. When the Fukushima Japan earthquake took place, we immediately looked at things throughout the state. We toured like the Fulton, uh, Missouri, the power plant for Union Electric to make sure that it was up to seismic uh, uh, standard should we have a uh, earthquake in any other facility that used nuclear uh, to a certain degree was looked at. We've looked at a lot of the schools throughout southeast Missouri and the ones that have been approved recently with our uh, new schools going up, they have seismic that's required by state law in them. They do a lot of educational stuff and provide the governor's office with an annual report. And so a lot of it's done by, your, your meetings are done right out of my office by telephone. But it gets a representative out of southeast Missouri. I think uh, uh, several other people, Bud Hunt, uh, uh, Diane Reiser's former husband, uh, we passed away, Larry, had served on this committee. Uh, there's been several others, but those are two right here in the uh, Kennett area that served on it. And it's to keep, hopefully it's to keep Southeast Missouri in the forefront should something happen. I've had to work with FEMA recently on an update with the uh, national plan that they were looking at for the new matter default within Missouri. So there is some things that will benefit from it, hopefully. Uh, in the long run, but I just wanted to make that noted since you may have seen it in the news. I, I haven't even seen it, but I knew they did a release and had several people say something to me about it. Congratulations. Uh, appreciate it and uh, represent the city the best we can in those endeavors. Uh, Fire Prevention Week <coughs> took place last month from the 8th of October through the 12th. They, they went to 15 different locations throughout the city. Total of uh, 1,225 children from daycares, preschool, up through the third grade. They have a, a poster contest each year. Association, in, in conjunction with Walmart, they provide a, a young man and a young lady in the third grade with a brand new bicycle. When they win the poster contest, that always goes over big. Um, they also Paul Spain, the fire marshal set up with Walmart where you get more traffic to do a change of clock, change your battery, hopefully to educate people on smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. They're good for about 10 years and after that you need to toss them. 
So if you've got one older than 10 years old, it may still beep and work, but as soon as you can, you probably need a, there's a date on the back of them. In fact, newer ones are coming out with a 10-year battery in it, and when the battery chirps, it's time to get rid of it. Uh, we participated in the trunk of tree at two different locations, which were well attended, and really, I think, from the original one, it's, there's two or three or four around here, and I think it's great for the kids to be able to get out in a controlled environment in today's society and uh, be able to still enjoy the Halloween atmosphere. So that's pretty well what we got. The Mo Crew is working on the uh, alleyways at this time. Between that and getting some equipment maintenance and ready for next season, that's been working on a um, idea to get the limbs out of the, the overgrown limbs. I've talked with Randy. We're still working on an idea on a project to help us with that. So that's what's going on in all that. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I put in your package a cost analysis for the uh, individual take home cars of the last five. Councilman Knutsis and Councilman Freeman did a study and kind of breaks down the best way I can back when we shared vehicles. Uh, all those records are gone. No way for me to go back and get that. So I had based everything off of averages. Pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions on it, feel free to contact me at any time. I just want to stress the, the need for us to continue on the trading program for these cars right now. I think in the budget, there's only a budget for like three cars. Uh, we could actually use five easily. But if we keep going, we don't do any trade-ins this year. Coming up on the next fiscal year, we're going to be looking at doing about eight or ten. That's going to need to be taken off the road. I don't. I know that the cost by it that we're looking at, but because of the cost that we've had in financing the city, we just haven't been able to afford it. So kind of keep in mind on the next fiscal year when we ask for almost twice or two and a half times what we budgeted for this year going to want. Uh, like I said, keep in mind we could replace five of them very easily. So if you do have any questions, feel free to contact me. Okay. Appreciate you working with us. Yes. Uh, also, this past week, we had two radar units come in off of the grant. The grant was done before I got in here, so I can't tell you what grant it was. We're going to save those two radar units for when we do get new cars, but it looks like it's going to be a while before we get them. We'll go ahead and put them in use in a couple of the old cars. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Also, one last thing I got. Uh, we are doing some raffle tickets for an officer that has a need. Uh, we're giving away a Glock 43 9mm uh, tickets for $20 a piece. Uh, um, see Captain, or Sergeant Dennis if you want a ticket. Okay. The paper can put something out for that too. Any questions? Start off with something a little different from the street department tonight. Uh, several firefighters and police officers have been recognized for saving lives, and rightly so, they should be. I uh, don't know that uh, street department employees saved a life, but uh, on November 1st, two employees were cleaning debris off storm drains in the west part of town. They thought they heard someone yell for help. Uh, they started looking around. At first, they didn't see anybody or hear anything. They heard something again, they thought it was the word help, but they saw a pair of tennis shoes sticking out uh, under a carport uh, like the person was, had fallen inside. So they went to investigate that, and an elderly lady had fallen. Uh, I'm not sure whether she was trying to get in or out of her house, but she had fallen. <coughs> and, uh, 
all she had asked them was to help her get up, but she made a statement that one of her legs, she couldn't move one of her legs. So uh, even though they're not first responders, uh, we've had some basic training uh, in first aid, and they uh, told her that they thought it would be best if uh, she not be moved. Uh, it was in the low 50s, and the wind chill was below that. Uh, they took off her coats and threw them over her. I called 911. At that time, the fire department and the medic one were out on other calls. Uh, so they stayed with her until you know, the medic and uh, one ambulance could come from out of town. It took about 40 minutes. Uh, during this time period, they saw uh, a blanket inside her house and, and talked to her. They were talking to her constantly to be sure that she stayed alert and see, as much as they knew to tell about her condition changing. And uh, she told them it was okay to go get the blanket. She was very cold to the touch. Uh, but like I said, we don't know that the, uh, they saved her life. We're not trying to go there. Uh, when Medic One did get there, they did transport her to the hospital, uh, have a check, try to check on the condition, uh, you know, anything like that. But, uh, you know, in, in this situation, two street department employees were in the right place at the right time. Uh, not because of anything that was planned, not responding to <coughs> incidents like emergency responders do, but. Uh, just, just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, occasionally uh, things work out for the citizens that our guys are in the place. Uh, most of my other uh, has been covered, uh, the Third Street uh, and the township issues. Uh, like it's been mentioned, we're trying to wrap up the construction season. Uh, going late into the year, uh, the rain throughout the fall slowed us down. Uh, we spent about five hours today trying to get water off of Frisco over here so we can possibly try to lay asphalt again tomorrow. Uh, as Collier can tell you, uh, it's been a long time working on Falcon uh, down there in front of the nursing home, uh, again for the same thing, and, and Steve also. Yeah. Uh, it but, looks good what you've done. Uh, thank you. I mean, the contractors are working hard at it, but uh, it's, it's taken some uh, real effort and uh, teamwork between uh, the cooperation and trying to change some plans and what kind of cement we're putting down and everything else to, to try to get this work done. Uh, the city crew is, uh, most of you know, been working here at City Hall quite a bit to help try to satisfy some of the requests. request. Uh, to get some of the holes filled out there. Uh, we've spent somewhere in the neighborhood of $8,000 out here that really wasn't budgeted, but you know, we're able to handle it out of the transportation issues. But uh, uh, you can tell from the report that you've got, I think most of the days have been spent out of the last time period. Uh, you know, I've been working with street repair. I mean, we counted the city hall as part of that street repair. But, uh, you know, that's been a major emphasis. The uh, weather's going to turn cold, so you know, we're really hoping that we can get in tomorrow at least, and, and maybe Thursday and Friday also. That we'll try to get this right. That's all I've got. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good job out on City Hall. You removed a lot of tripping hazards. <coughs> We're working on a. We're, well, yeah, yeah, we, we talked we got about it. Yeah. Uh, at this point in time, I need to get further with Brandy because I wouldn't want to order something to make sure unless it's going to work on that particular piece of equipment. You have the committee backing, I'm sure, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, you can use that. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably get a little bit of discussion on that in the school department. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At this time, I'd like the Johnson approval to appoint Bill Palmer as mayor pro tem to replace Jimmy Wilson. Actually, it ought to be in the uh, since it's the uh, mayor pro tem of the council. The nomination should come from the council. Oh, okay. I make a motion that Bill Palmer step in as mayor pro tem in Kenny Wilson's absence. I'll second your motion. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, Bill, I've got to leave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, in the package, you've got a copy of a quote. I have a problem out of uh, Bill number four to compress the, uh, that's where the high score cotton is stored. And, uh, the, floor, the dirt under the floor is washed away and the concrete has fallen in and uh, it needs some TLC pretty quickly. Uh, discussed it with Randy and uh, we decided probably the best way is to go with the quote that you have in your pocket there. Uh, the money will come out of the compress fund. Fine. Yep. So we have money there. It cost of eighty-eight hundred dollars. You can see the pictures there. That's uh, one of the things. And we bought that property knowing that the buildings were going to have to have work. Is it? Is this the only bid we got? Yes. Can what it cost? That, that actually originated for Jim. Can we get another bid? We can try. Randy, you got anybody that would bid on it? The contacts and people. I mean, the reason, I mean, the reason we did this was there in town, we knew the mobilization would be less you know, to haul the equipment in. And like I said, Grieven made the first contact. Are, are they going to fix the problem that caused the workshop? I understand, I, I don't know. I understand COGW has already fixed that. There was a problem with the sprinkling system, I think, where it had been frozen and broken last winter. So According to the proposal, there might be additional cost mm -hmm. after they remove the concrete. Yeah. Look at the bottom of the proposal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. The problem is, the, until you take the concrete out, you don't know how much dirt's worked out from underneath. I make a motion. We seek other bids. I'll second. Okay. Mm -hmm. All Aye. Aye. We'll seek other goods and uh, try to get those back to you by the next council meeting. What about the phone system? Uh, we're going to table the phone system for right now. Uh, <coughs> council says that uh, we have to verify whether we can get out of the existing contract, okay. which has about Eight months or well, we've got ten months. It's August first, okay. two thousand nineteen. Right. Uh, this is a legal issue on the Terry, but uh, okay. right now we're experiencing a lot of uh, non-service. Well, I'll, I'll need to get all that documented so we can we'll provide it to you. We don't want to be paying an extra three thousand dollars on that. Group. And there's also an issue of. Uh, there was a draft in an extra month. Yeah. Well, it's typical. It's all at the same time. Can you believe that? Uh, just show true. We'll open the floor for public comments. Ooh, yes, sir. Hello, uh, Billy Palmer. Um, I was just wanted to kind of come up and tell you guys something which me and my wife have been working on up at the, uh, excuse me, up at the Opera House uh, this Friday night. Uh, we're going to have our first major concert up there. Um, we're bringing in an artist named Allie Colleen. Uh, she is the daughter of Garth Brooks. And so we're really excited to get the chance to bring her into town. Um, kind of what our goal is as we bought the Opera House is to bring different events like that to, to Kennett. Try to, uh, give people things to do, and I just wanted to kind of make everybody aware of that. Um, appreciate any support that you guys are able to give, and kind of just getting the word out, really. Um, any chance Garth is going to be there? 
<laughs> it's been rumored. Let's spread the word. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny that. Good enough for me. Um, but she she is uh, she's getting ready to release her first uh, album here relatively soon. She's uh, she graduated college this spring. Um, me and my wife got a chance to see her in Southern Illinois. She opened for Ashley McBride over there. Um, very, very talented uh, artist. Um, nobody really has heard of her. She wants to make it on her own and not go off Dad's name. Uh, so, which I think is really cool. Doesn't help ticket sales um, by not putting that in writing. <laughs> so you'll tell everybody. But, but uh, word of mouth is uh, a little bit different. There you go. So uh, anyway, we're gonna. The whole thing's gonna start. Uh, doors are gonna open at six o'clock on Friday night. Um, the, we've got an opening band coming out of uh, Paragool, um, and they'll do about a 45 minute set and then do a little brief intermission and then uh, while during the intermission we'll do a meet and greet backstage um, for our VIP ticket uh, purchasers and they'll get to meet Allie, get autographs and some refreshments and stuff backstage uh, and be able to just kind of hang out and meet her. and. And she'll come on stage uh, somewhere around uh, 8.30 to 8.45ish. And then she'll do an hour and 15 minute set, roughly, uh, give or take. I told her I wasn't going to kick her off stage. I'd stay there and listen to her as long as she wanted to keep playing. So, But mainly I just wanted to kind of get the word out that she was going to be in town. And I know there's a lot of fun things happening this Friday night, which is cool. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to spread the word on that. What are the ticket prices? The ticket prices. Um, we're doing tickets at $25 for general admission. Mm -hmm. um, and then the VIP tickets we're doing at $50. And like I said, with the VIP, you get, you'll get to go backstage, get autographs, and get some free refreshments and stuff back there also. So, guys, I appreciate it, and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody's waiting. All right. Well, I, I, okay, something different besides St. Francis. Oh, okay. Dog issue. Um, I didn't think it was a big problem, but uh, uh, some animal had knocked down a uh, piece of my uh, uh, air conditioning, and they were able to get inside my garage. Well, that probably got taken care of, but lo and behold, a couple of stray dogs I had called the uh, catcher about had gotten in there. I walked in and they're back here laying on a pile of insulation. And I'm like, okay. And so then they went on out the same way they came in, not thinking anything of it. I have no idea how many times they did that because the hole was probably open for a week or so. All right, Tuesday I found out how bad of an idea that was. All right, I walked out there and I'm bug bombing every two days. The fleas that these animals leave behind is atrocious. Uh, I mean, it is just, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, anybody got any better ideas? I mean, I, you know, 1,200 square foot garage, six bug bombs at a time. That should cover it, but, you know, they're oh, less. Oh, Vector. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, um, so, yeah, so from the stray dog point of view, you know, it's, you see them out and about, there's, it's more detrimental than you think. Yeah. Luckily, they haven't made it to the backyard on our dog. Um, they've stayed out there in the garage, so nobody's using the garage. I'm, you know, every two, three days I go out there, sophomore bug bombs, but yeah, I've got to call somebody to have it professionally, you know, uh, done away with. But St. Francis Project, I talked with Mitzi today, and she's just waiting on the Mets. So, that's all I did. There we go. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I just got a question real quick. What's the penalty if you get caught dumping dogs or cats or whatever in the city? Up to five hundred dollar fine. That's it. Well, that's the maximum we can do. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a, and that's if you see it. Or up to ninety days in jail. I like that. <laughs> but up five hundred dollar fine is the maximum. Municipality can levy. Good question. It could depend on what the case is. It could go to the county. 
and it could oh, be yeah. called into the state if the dogs are not able to fed properly and all that other stuff. And uh, believe me, Tina Pettix, the animal control, the senior animal control uh, officer, she has done that. She's followed up on cases where people have literally just uh, abused an animal and it went to the uh, state court. Council, have anybody you want to bring up? If not, we will adjourn this meeting and go to closed session. Need a motion? No, so. So moved. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.